Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is George and in this video we're going to take a look at how different sky conditions affect astrophotography. In particular I got two images to show you. Uh, both of them were captured using exactly the same telescope, camera, camera settings, exposure time and it's the same target of course, but the sky conditions were different. So the first image was captured under Bortle 2, really dark sky at Cherry Spring State Park and the second image of the same target was captured under more light polluted Bortle 6 sky in Williamsburg, Virginia. So let's uh, jump into the video and take a look at these two images in details. All right guys, so we're in the PixInsight app and on the screen I got two stacks of NGC 7023 target, uh, which is also known as the Iris Nebula. And um, both of these images, they have two hours worth of exposure time. One image was captured under Bortle 2, the other image was captured under Bortle 6 skies. Let's apply auto stretch and compare these two images. And I think <laughs> we can finish the video here, right? Because uh, uh, without a doubt you can see uh, which image was captured under Bortle 2, which image was captured under Bortle 6, guys. Uh, we can definitely say that the image on the right looks much better. And uh, this one was captured at Cherry Spring State Park. This shot is Bortle 6 sky. What I want to do now is quickly process these images and uh, we'll take a look at some uh, closer parts. All right, so what I want to do now is to register both these images so uh, stars are aligned. As you can see, I have uh, a little shift in the rotation of these images. So I'm going to star align them first. All right, so Bortle 6 image is now aligned to Bortle 2. Let's auto stretch it and compare. Yep. These two images are registered, it's all good. Okay, now I want to crop them so that I will get rid of these uh, uh, background artifacts. Uh, let's go to geometry, dynamic crop. Let's crop it like that. Yep, so we're gonna crop Bortle 2. Okay, and crop Bortle 6 image. All right, so both of these images, uh, they are star aligned and uh, I crop them so that we have the same field of view and we keep registration. Uh, what I want to do now is to do like a quick processing. Uh, this part of the video I'm going to put like on a time lapse mode. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details of the processing, but you'll briefly see it. And then we'll take a closer look at uh, these two images in terms of uh, how many details we get on both images and uh, what about noise that uh, we have on these images as well. So let's begin processing. All right, so I just did color calibration on these two images and uh, background extraction. So images look a bit closer to each other and um, yep, uh, you can definitely see the difference. In Bortle 2 image, we have many more details in terms of these dust structures. Like for example, this uh, part in the top left corner here, you can definitely see the, cloud, the dust cloud over there. And uh, if we take a look at the Bortle 6 image, like this one, the dark structure, the dark structure here on the Bortle 2, this is almost washed out on the Bortle 6 image. In fact, uh, say I look at the Bortle 6 image my very first time, I'm not sure I could say that there is something except a star field on the image, maybe like this galaxy. But I think it's kind of obvious that under dark skies you can get uh, much better results using the same amount of exposure time. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna quickly process these images further, and uh, we'll take a look at the final uh, result. All right, I also want to pause here for a second and uh, I just slightly stretched these images 
and uh, yep, as you can see, uh, the image on the right is Portal 2 Sky. In terms of details, you can definitely say that image on the left has much more noise, especially like in these uh, dark cloud structure parts, like there are much more noise here on the left part than on the right part, and I'm going to just show it to you a bit uh, closer. Yeah, like here. Uh, by the way, in terms of calibration, both of these images were calibrated using flats, respectively, for each image, and uh, dark frames, of course, and uh, yep, as you can see, there are many more details on the uh, right side than on the left side. It's kind of subjective, but what I notice in terms of stars, uh, the stars are much more prominent on the image from Bortle 2 skies. And of course, I think it's kind of logical because uh, where Bortle 6, we have much more light pollutions. Uh, so like, I think it's a, it's a result that the stars, they kind of more faded and they kind of washed out uh, by the uh, light pollution. So they are less prominent that on the Bortle 2 sky. But uh, yeah, the results are really, really different. So let's continue with processing. Okay, now we're in Adobe Photoshop and what I did is remove stars and continued working with uh, my background part of the image. And uh, right now on the screen you're looking at the Portal 2 image and just as a comparison, uh, the layer that's on top, it's Portal 6 image. And uh, yep guys, you can see that's the huge difference in terms of signal to noise ratio and uh, the overall performance of uh, like both of these images. Uh, Bortle 2 image looks much, much better. And Bor Bortle 6 image, I mean, what can you, what else can you expect from uh, the two hours of exposure time under uh, light polluted sky? But yeah, I think uh, this uh, uh, example and this video overall shows you the idea that why we as photographers try to capture under really dark skies and uh, uh, why people try to go under dark skies to capture uh, much better images uh, using the same amount of exposure time. And yeah, the difference is way too noticeable here, especially like uh, this part. You can see on the Bortle 2 image, there are lots of uh, things going on on the background and uh, it's all washed out by the light pollution or the on the Bortle 6 e uh, image. Yeah, and uh, this part, yes, you can see it obviously, but uh, there are almost no details. While here on the Bortle 2 image, uh, this part of uh, NGC 7023 is more prominent and uh, yep, the difference is more obvious. And uh, what's interesting is that in order to achieve the same SNR as here on Portal 2 image, I might need to capture, my guess is like, I need to capture at least 10 to 15 hours force of exposure time under Bortle 6 sky in order to achieve same result as I did in two hours under Bortle 2 sky. So yeah, I think that's all I got for today, guys. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you my final images of uh, the Iris Nebula captured under Bortle 2 and Bortle 6 skies to compare them and look at them again. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video until very end. I really hope to see you in the future videos, guys. And until next time, clear skies.